Hello and welcome. It's Jennifer Britton. I'm the author of several books, including the focus of today's call, Effective Virtual Conversations. This is a series of monthly, semi-monthly calls that I host on a related, on a topics related to effective virtual conversations. Maybe you're a team leader, really looking at how do you harness the skills and talents of your team. That's a great topic and certainly going to be the focus of today's theme of five virtual team builders. Others that enjoy these calls are facilitators and coaches who are looking at expanding their reach and expanding their skills in the arena of virtual. Maybe you're doing webinars, maybe you're doing virtual group coaching, maybe you're looking how to master Zoom. Certainly that's what Effective Virtual Conversations is all about. And my 2017 book took a deep dive into the topic of what it takes to create those engaging, and impactful effective virtual conversations. It's part results, it's part relationships, it's part engagement strategies. So if this is a first call that you have joined, welcome, it's the start of a new year, it's January 14th actually, 2019. As I mentioned, I host about six to 12 of these a year. I think we'll see this year probably somewhere in the range of six to eight. You can check out the website at effectivevirtualconversations.com. Today's call is all about virtual team development, and I want to jump in. These calls are usually no more than 30 minutes. I want to talk today about virtual teams, how they're a little bit different. We're going to look at five different techniques for supporting teams. We're going to get a reminder of some of the different interaction techniques, and I want to take you into something that I've been naming since about 2000 and uh, probably 14 called the six factors of high performing teams. As we look out at the uh, team effectiveness research, what do we know about what helps teams excel? A lot of today's content comes from part three of effective virtual conversations. So you're pretty much looking at pages 300 to about 444. I love to write. I'm a prolific author. Most coaches, most trainers and leaders say that it was a worthwhile investment though. In most of my books, in all of my books actually, and I've just launched book number five, they're very practical, very tactical, and help you do your best work. So welcome. I think we all want to avoid the death by conference call. If you're a team leader, this is what you probably look like. You're listening to a call. You're, you've got a thousand to-dos, as you can see, with the basket inside you or beside this gentleman. And we want to avoid that. We want to have more of a zen experience. What is different is very much dependent on the platform and groups that you're working with. In the virtual learning environment, we may be doing Zoom calls, we may be doing WebEx calls, we may still be on the phone. And I think we constantly want to remember we need to consider the pace. Pace is typically quicker, we want to use more interaction, bring people's voices on. I had a new group launch this morning, it's a group of 10, we use chat, we use breakouts, we used annotation, all in 75 minutes, along with creating our ground rules and ways of working. And so it's really important that in the virtual space, we leverage what we can. We take opportunities to boost connection and trust. People don't feel safe, they're not gonna engage. And one of the best things we can do is really leverage uh, streaming. Having the use of our streaming can really help. And in today's virtual world, it's a real opportunity. We can harness and benefit from the diverse perspectives and expertise that exists in the room. Part and parcel though of making it work is really helping people have visual anchors. And just like I shared a few minutes ago, we're just gonna be looking at three things today. Keeping it simple is also key in virtual work as it is in the modality of coaching. So let's jump right in and we're gonna look at some activities. Today I wanted to share with you five main activities plus a little bit of a bonus. So in getting to know each other, which is the first thing we wanna do with virtual teams, we may be using exercises like icons, icons or coins. I also wanted to take you into a second area that you may find yourself facilitating with teams or with groups, which is what's your vision? Now, teams excel when they trust each other, when they know each other. And so to boost trust, I often get asked, how do you build trust? How do you build trust in the virtual environment? And while this is a million dollar question, I wanted to share with you an exercise I've been using for several years now called appreciations. Now, getting to know each other, knowing each other, trusting each other is not enough for success in today's workforce. We need to understand how we operate, what our goals are, 
that's part and parcel of the six factors. And I want to share with you a work mapping exercise. So we'll go through that as well. And a final exercise I want to share that you might think about adapting and tweaking for your work is a team culture activity. How do we work and facilitate a conversation around our identities, our values, and out that, the behaviors which shape the norms which really make our context. So on to exercise number one. Our first two exercises are about getting to know each other. And depending on the groups that you work with, if it's virtual and remote, you might be working across geographic locations. You may have a team member calling in from Asia, one from Australia, one from Africa, one from New York, one from Europe. And so we do want to also create an opportunity for people to get comfortable and confident as they might be coming into a working language that is not their first language. I personally like to use icons. I think icons are cross-cultural. They, uh, they, they, they actually like really span the world. And I say this as someone who, since the early 1990s, has spent the, well, the majority of my career working with professionals who are outside of Canada, my home nation. So while I am back in Canada, actually a bulk of my work happens outside of this country, and I still see this day to day. In my former world of work, I manage cross-cultural and global teams. Probably the most diverse I'd like to share was my last three years of work with the UN. I was a sub-regional manager. I had staff in 10 countries. And out of our team of about 35, at one point, there were 26 different nationalities. So getting to know each other, getting to understand who we are, what's important to us, how we are similar and how we are different is a really critical component of the virtual team leader's role. And so one thing you might do is go to a stock photo supply because we do want to retain uh, copyright and respect intellectual property. You may want to invest in a series of icons. This icon uh, and graphic, like so many of mine, I get from Adobe Stock. And I have a commercial license, so every month I have access to 10 more uh, icons and graphics that I can use in my work. How I've used this, this has been the backdrop of a conversation around who am I and what am I bringing to the group. I've also used a similar icon to help the conversation flow around how do you prefer to give and receive feedback. Towards the end of last year, I was using a similar icon around vision. What's your vision for next year? And what was interesting, for the first time, I had people picking icons in the actual puzzle piece. So normally, as I've used this in the past, people would select one icon. When I was asking people to select the, the vision of where they wanted to go with their career, they were actually picking a whole puzzle piece. So making up a story, for example, of the bottom left icons and what it meant to them. Regardless, it doesn't have to take a lot of time, but starting your call, starting your Zoom, starting your Skype meeting, your webinar, with something like this can just immediately signal that it's a little bit different. We're not on the death by conference call, we're here to actually have a conversation. I want you to engage and I want you to actually share a little bit about yourself in a way that hopefully is not too threatening. I think there's enough variety here that it gets people to invite into the conversation. Now, if you don't like that, if you have very specific requirements on graphics that are used, which is the case in many organizations, Maybe you can leverage coins, and what you see in front of you is a selection of Canadian coinage. So we've got our pennies, which are no longer in circulation. We've got our dimes, our nickels. We also have something known as the loony, which is a dollar coin, which it's called the loony because of the loon on the front, one of our national birds. And although I don't think it's an official national bird. And we also have the toonie, which is this coin over here, because it's $2. Hence the tuning. So this is a fun ex exercise I picked up from a colleague who attended a program with me and he introduced this. This is just simply getting people to uh, grab some change that they have available at their desk or maybe in their pocket or their briefcase or their purse and to actually just pick one of those coins and then to notice what is the year on that coin. The invitation is to share one thing about your work, your life, your world, and you can frame it differently, from that year. So maybe I, I picked 20, uh, 2004. That was the year Potentials Realized was started. 
maybe I pick a coin that was 2009, which was the first year one of my books was published, that being effective group coaching. Or maybe I pick 2017 and I decide to talk a little bit about effective virtual conversations. So coins like this, it's a low, uh, sort of lower risk exercise. Hopefully people have materials on hand. It can be really neat if you're working with a global team for people to show their coinage and to also talk a little bit more about how coins operate or how currency operates in their own world. As virtual and remote team leaders, we do wanna take every opportunity for people to help our team members get to know each other on both the professional level and also a little bit more about the context in which they operate. So that's coins. The second area is to get people to work with vision. And I would like to actually share with you a short video uh, you can watch this at a later date, but I'd like you to grab a pen and a paper and be thinking about your work this year. Follow along and watch the photos. What's the photo that speaks to you in this video? So vision is a really powerful source. I'm hoping there was one photo that really connected with you. I've been using this video, which I created a few weeks ago um, in programs, in courses. I have speaking engagements later this week, and it's been fascinating to see what people are resonating and connecting with. Really, it's all across the board. What's important is not what people connect with, but how they're able to share it with others and how they're able to put their own vision out in the world. What are you hopeful for this year? What do you want to connect? Well, you don't have to go and create your own video. If you're interested in this, please check out a copy and you can share it with your team if you go over to our YouTube channel. And if you check out Effective Group Coach or type in my name, Jennifer J. Britton, you should be able to be taken to my YouTube channel where there's dozens of videos and audios there in YouTube channel. Of course, it's all video but share it with your team. I have created these intentionally to have you help the conversation with your team. And just as much as we wanna help people connect in with what's important, we may also as virtual team leaders wanna leave space and time for people to share a thank you. We are moving so quickly in today's workforce that we don't often have the chance to say thank you, whether it's in writing or whether it is verbal. And it can be useful at all stages of the year, even on a quarterly basis, 
to give some appreciations, to talk about what's working well, to give thanks to those that have gone above and beyond or done things, as well as to highlight and signal things that we need to pay attention to or make changes around. So you really can boost trust, not only through the streaming, but by leaving time for people to share appreciations. And not, again, just in writing, because we know that not everyone reads email. Give team members an opportunity to share heart to heart in front of others their appreciation. All right. The next one is a whole bucket of um, team culture. And there's actually three areas that I think are so important with team culture. It's the who are we, how do we do it, and what is important. So team culture, three elements. Who are we? how do we do things, and what is important. And so as much as easy as it would have been to just pick one exercise, I think this is an area that is a stretch for so many team leaders. I know years ago when I was starting out as a team leader, and that was like many moons ago as I was my first team that I led, I was about 18 years old. I was leading waterfront teams as a swimming instructor, as a lifeguard. And I became really conscious of, like, we need to talk about who are we, um, what's working, what's our focus, as well as, like, what, how do we want to be together? We, we worked in a very remote provincial park in Canada, high stress, you know, like, we were responsible for the well-being of 200 children below the ages of 16. And, you know, it was murky water, uh, cold water. So it was really important as a team of instructors and lifeguards to really be able to get things right. So a couple of exercises that I've picked up over the years to look at who are we? There's a quick exercise called the best team, getting people to think about the time when they were part of a team that was at their best. Get people to share what that was like. What were the things you did practically, tactically? What made it a best team? Even if we're not on the best team, it can be great to aspirationally reconnect people with what makes teams excel. And that is something that we can aspire to. So like this team here on the board, doesn't take need to take a lot of time. If you're doing a retreat, you can do this online around the Zoom room. Just use a whiteboard to capture out behaviors, practices, characteristics of those best teams. Might take you about 15 minutes. Now, the second area, how do we do things, the area of norms is something as coaches we've been heavily involved with for the last several decades. As a team coach, one of the first things we do is help a team identify who are we and how do we do things? What is important? So we're really working across this arc. And what's interesting is so many of us have been doing this anecdotally. Well, a few years ago, Google commissioned some research to find out what helps its best teams excel. And one of the components that came out of that research on project, I want to call it Project Alpha, was the fact that teams that excelled had shared norms, had shared agreements on how they operated. So this is a question I asked last year, how do we have each other's backs? If you're not aware, go on over to the Teams 365 blog at potentialsrealized.com. That's my company, potentialsrealized.com. You'll find the Teams 365 blog. And Every Thursday, I include a team building tip. You'll find many questions there to spark the conversation around things like norms, how do we do things, who are we, or what is important. And team culture is not just about identity. It is also about what are the things that underpin us? What are the things that we strive for? What are the lines in the sand that we do not cross? So values may be different from team A to team B, even in an organization even two teams that sit beside each other on the same floor of a building. Let's consider team A, which is a financial services team. For that financial services team, they may believe in quality, accuracy, and speed. That might be in contrast to marketing, which is beside it, that marketing believes in creativity, innovation, and listening. See what I mean? Now our values are the things that, are, that we're constantly driving towards. They show up in our actions and in our um, elements. So think about what is important as you think about values. So we've looked at five different sets of areas. Just a reminder, team culture, trust and appreciations. We also have looked at the other area of the vision and the photo collage video getting to know you, coins, as well as our icon example. 
So think about how you might use any one of these in your meetings. Now, one area that I've been writing about for maybe five years now is an area I call the six factors of high performing teams. And I referenced the, the initial days of starting to see this in one of the research teams that I interviewed in my book, From One to Many, Best Practices for Team and Group Coaching. Uh, Dr. Peters and Dr. Carr talked about team effectiveness and researched that for their PhDs. They looked at what helps teams excel. And really as the research is sort of like distilled down, there's many, many different areas, including shared vision, where are we going? We talked about an exercise around that today. Shared goals, so what are we aiming towards? What's the one thing we wanna do? Are we all clear on what those goals are, how we're contributing to them, and how I might be interfacing with them? And it's really key as a virtual team to be clear on this, because I, in Toronto, want to make sure that I'm contributing to the goals and doing similar exercises, maybe at a similar time frame, which makes sense to my colleague who is in Los Angeles, or who might be remote in from Sao Paulo in Brazil. We all need to have shared performance measures. We need to understand that the way I'm being uh, measured and, and the things that I'm striving towards are the same here as in Brazil, as in the US. And many virtual remote teams today may not have had these conversations. As with anything in a virtual remote space, we wanna make the implicit things explicit. So we want to avoid assumptions. We want to, we want to avoid people assuming that everyone knows things. They may not. So what are the shared performance measures? How are we measuring? Who's getting measured? How are you doing that with people you may not see every day? Big questions. And a fourth area I wanted to touch on, area four, is clear roles. What are the roles we play? Who are the ones on the team that are great at getting projects started versus getting projects completed? While it may not always be in our, in our hands or in our measures, you can, uh, you'll want to definitely make sure that you're very clear on the rules and who's doing what. Team practices, teams that excel get to know each other. They communicate regularly. They communicate through perhaps a drop in lunch or evening. Again, across time zones, it's nice to break bread together, even if it's just for social reasons. One of the biggest pitfalls, I think, for a lot of virtual remote teams is we feel that we don't have to have meetings because, you know what, I, my work isn't connected with so-and-so. As I stepped into my last role, paid role, for another organization years ago before I started my own business, the first question I asked my assistant was, so tell me, when does the team get together? And she looked at me almost as in horror, like, well, we've never gotten together. What do you mean, when do we get together? And I said, well, we're across countries, but with technology today, we must be able to connect. And in fact, for 30 years, that organization had not facilitated a cross-country meeting. Uh, there were even like not many calls across the team. Well, that's something I rolled in, in my, my first year, in the first few months of my role. We saw from a day and a half face-to-face -face work on micro-budget that it had tremendous positive impact in terms of sharing, learning, um, even just the professional effectiveness that happened occurring between, within the team and how the peer groups could reach out. Uh, as I mentioned, I had staff across 10 countries and um, you might think that there was a lot of radical difference. There was, and it was interesting how many of those professionals had to work across the region. And so having those connections made it really, really valuable for them. They could do their work more effectively and more efficiently and had better networks to tap into. So think about your team practices, what is bringing people together, what is sparking a conversation. And finally, the last area I wanted to talk about briefly is shared commitment. Shared commitment is how do we have each other's backs? What am I committed to doing no matter what? That is key, no matter what. So shared commitment is all about getting things done, getting things done, follow through. As you can see here, loyalty, devotion, de dedication. It is about having each other's backs. So going back to my own writing, I share the six factors of high performing teams a little bit and from one to many. Uh, I also then go on to expand more on it in effective virtual conversations and in every other book that I've written 
probably uh, not since, but you know, certainly in my blogging work, if you go to potentialsrealized.com, check out the team's 365 blog, you'll find out more there around the six factors of high performing teams. I also, just because we're talking teams today, I felt that it was important to point to the research work of a brilliant researcher, Amy Edmonston. She writes about the four pillars of teaming and skills teams need today. The source is teaming, and she talks about the, the imperative for having teams feel safe enough to be able to speak up, having teams uh, really boost their muscles around collaboration, experimentation, trying things out and learning, and then reflection. Part of that is it allows us then to involve everyone, um, leverage different styles, and also look at using uh, and working in different ways. And that's part of being a great virtual and remote team leader, being also a great virtual and remote team member. Team membership is just as important as team leadership because everyone is a leader without title, as Robin Sharma would mention. So one other tool I wanted to share was workflow mapping. And uh, I've just drawn this on the screen. Let's say you're assigning a report. Um, really important to sort of note that really across our virtual team, Saul, Jane, and Lee are going to be involved in this. There's writing, there's analysis, and there's graphics. They each have their own uh, tasks. But what we might not see here with this initial work mapping is that, in fact, the analysis from Jane needs to fit in to the writing of Saul. That's one. And then this then needs to fit into Lee. And so it's really important that the team also understands just how far can they go without the information of others and what is required as you go. So I'm going to just go back to our, our area here, workflow mapping. That can be a really useful tool to be thinking about as you move forward with your work. Okay, so that's workflow mapping. We talked a little bit about what's different. For more on this difference between virtual and in-person, do check out the April 2017 community call at from one to many.com. And ultimately, we do want to check out the, the right platforms that make sense. August 2018, the community call for effective virtual conversations was about platforms to consider. You can find all of those over at my YouTube channel, Google my name, Jennifer J. Britton, or Effective Group Coach, and you'll find them there. Just a reminder, lots of skills to leverage as a virtual remote team leader from being tech savvy, working on our feet, building connection, being well read, being optimistic, passing it to the group. This, of course, comes from effective virtual conversations. And hopefully it's just a quick way to remember what do we want to keep an eye on. I recently read a trends article for 2019, and they said that cartoons are soon going to supersede stock photography for learning retention. Really pleased about that because as I wrote this book, Effective Virtual Conversations in 2016, early 2017, it was important to have these things stick. So remember your skills. Also consider how you can make it interactive and interesting because that's going to move us from the death by conference call over to something that's meaningful. We remember things that are meaningful, different, and of course, we want to put it into practice. So if you have effective virtual conversations, be sure to follow the Appendix B at the end. What are the action steps or what are the key learning points from each and every chapter? Use the book, flag the book, devour the book. That's my request. I'm going to be continuing to run a number of programs I think you could be interested in. Virtual Facilitation Essentials, I'll be running that again uh, this month and also later this month, uh, this spring. Uh, it is a five-week program, and last year it was approved for 8.5 hours of continuing coach education. We've got the annual programs, the Leadership Lab, which is geared for team leaders and team members. I've got the Learning Lab, which is geared for designers, and the Business Development Lab, which would be of interest of virtual entrepreneurs. On Saturday, February 2nd, I will be hosting the next Plan Do Track virtual retreat. That is a four hour process to get you pausing and thinking about what's important for you, getting you into planning, doing, and tracking your results. So, with that, I want to remind you process skills are important in keeping the flow of a group conversation going. Thank you. Please check out the regular EVC tips every Monday at the Teams 365 blog and also once in a while over at Effective Virtual Conversations. I'm Jennifer Britton, thanks for joining me. Check out our listing of calls for the fall. I think the next call will be the second Monday of February 
11 a.m. Hope to see you there. Take care. And please, if you found this useful, please comment and also share with others. Take care. Bye-bye.